About four months ago, OnePlus pushed out its first Android 12 beta update for those who wanted to try out Android 12 early on. The timing was impressive since they literally launched it the same day that Google announced Android 12 on stage. But the actual OnePlus update was doo-doo water. Not because it didn't have any fancy ex new exclusive features out the gates, of course I was expecting a basic vanilla Android 12 software, but what we got was a lot worse. The update would easily break your device every time you powered off the phone, or even if you just flashed the update, and it was extremely laggy as well to the point where you could barely use the phone. It was by far the worst beta update that I had ever experienced, and the situation got so bad that OnePlus had to actually take down the update from their forum page because people were crying for help. Not a great start. But just this week, OnePlus released a new Android 12 open beta update to hopefully redeem themselves. What I was most curious about was what ColorOS features had OxygenOS obtained since OnePlus decided to merge their code with Oppo's. For those interested, I even reviewed ColorOS 12 a few days ago. It's a beautiful update and there are even some OxygenOS features thrown in there. So if you're interested in watching that, click the eye in the top right corner after watching this video. Also, if you end up enjoying this review, consider subscribing with the notification bell turned on. Quality content like this is a weekly thing on the channel and you're not going to want to miss out. Now let's start with the big underlying question. Is OxygenOS 12 following Google's footsteps with a material you design? No, they're not. And as of now, they also don't support wallpaper-based themes, which is a bummer, but that doesn't mean that they won't support it in the future. ColorOS 12, for example, does support this option, and they're also not chasing after a material you design. OnePlus stated on their forum page that they're instead pursuing a burdenless design, where they're instead focusing on the lighting and shadowing of the interface to enhance readability and ease of use. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, I'm as confused as you are, but you do you, OnePlus. Uh, anyways, the OnePlus launcher is gone. It's been replaced by the ColorOS launcher, and to be frank, I have a love and hate relationship with this replacement. I love the new and improved customization options. When you long press the home screen, you now get more options, including swiping on the icons to quickly throw them to the bottom or top of the screen. You can also select multiple icons and move them all at once to a different screen. And the bottom bar includes several new options. Well, it's new to those who have a OnePlus device. Icons are much more customizable, there are different transitions to choose from, and the wallpapers page lets you see a ton more options at once. I also love the icon pull-down gesture since it makes it easier to launch apps with just one hand. However, the only things that I missed using were the hidden space feature to hide sensitive apps from my app drawer, and the extra category options when searching for apps, especially for finding newly installed apps much more quickly. Plus, I wish OnePlus would have updated the widgets panel to include a search bar and more condensed menus like in the native Android 12 update. I'm hoping they will in the future. The OnePlus icons also got a redesign. They're not following a new morphism theme with a lot more shadowing and subtle gradients to make the icons look like they're popping out of the screen. To be honest, I like the previous icons better though. The shelf menu is still there and has a completely different look. The cards can now be condensed and OnePlus Scout, a universal search bar, has been included. Those in India already use this feature within their OnePlus launcher, but for those who haven't, this lets you search for installed apps, shortcuts, new apps in the Play Store, contacts, notes, files, system settings, etc. It can even solve certain math problems without needing to open up the calculator app. It's advantageous, but it would be even better if OnePlus allowed everyone in the world, not just India, to experience this universal search bar within the launcher. I'll have my fingers crossed for the next update. Also for the shelf menu, you now have the option to bring it up whenever you swipe down the, on the top right corner of the screen. No longer will you need to be on the home screen just to launch it. And you can still include custom widgets of your own and resize them. The only thing I don't like is the plain background. Personally, I preferred having the weather forecast as the background. It was a lot more interesting. This is an exciting one. Dark mode within Auction OS 12 is a lot more customizable. For example, I can now choose between three levels of dark mode, just like in Color OS. So if I like a lighter shade of black, or a great background, I can easily have that. I can also allow the software to automatically adjust the screen's contrast based on my lighting environment, and I can have my wallpaper and icons become darker. Another excellent feature is that you can now open apps into split screen mode by just making a three finger swipe up gesture. It's magnificent for anyone who likes to multitask. The fingerprint sensor now has a new icon for every animation. Plus I love that there's a neat transition effect of the fingerprint icon when you turn on the device. And there's a few more fingerprint animations to choose from, which is nice. I personally like the wormhole. 
The always on display didn't get that many new changes, but there are still a few. Its menu within the settings now just looks like the one found in Color OS. It's a lot more organized and you can find certain clocks or features quicker. They've also updated the canvas feature, which outlines your face when the screen is locked. You can now change the look of the outline, including changing the brush strokes, adding new elements, and changing the colors. You can even remove any lines that you don't like with the eraser tool. And you can choose the placement of your face so that it doesn't get in the way of your clock or date. The only thing I wish they would have added is an option to avoid having my selfie become the wallpaper. Color OS already gives us this option, plus I think that we can all agree that having a picture of yourself as your wallpaper makes you look conceited. <laughs> Zen Mode finally has a new icon of its own, so I can finally find it within my app drawer. Before, you can only find it within the shelf menu, which was annoying because if you change the swipe down feature within the launcher settings to just bring up your notifications, you can no longer access Zen Mode. Now that's not an issue. The system settings got a significant redesign. Everything isn't dropped down like it used to be, but this could change in a future update. There's a search bar right below the title, and you can access your OnePlus account right below the search bar. The menus have also been moved around and there's no longer a description of what's included within each menu. Honestly though, I'm sure the majority of us never even bothered to read that small text. We all just hopped in the menu and looked to see if that option was there. The battery, accessibility, and privacy menu all got copied over from ColorOS 12. If you'd like to find out what's new within these settings, make sure to watch my ColorOS 12 video. And finally, I wanted to go over every major new change found within some OnePlus apps. But before I do, I wanted to tell you about Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Trust me, there are so many skills that you can learn here and it's so easy to get lost in your creativity. Their approach to teaching is made through easy to follow videos that are made by fellow creatives. For example, some of my favorite classes include YouTube success taught by Marcus Brown Lee, AKA MKBHD, so I can improve my overall video quality. He's taught me how to improve my scripting and video shooting, and honestly, it's interesting to see how a popular tech YouTuber goes about making such top quality content. A peek behind the scenes, if you will. I also love the Productivity Masterclass by Thomas Frank to better improve my productivity, and an advanced video editing class by Jordy to make my video editing sessions more efficient. The best part about Skillshare is that it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're constantly launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow your creativity. I'll even let you guys in on a deal. The first 1000 people who use the link in the description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. So don't wait, do something today that you couldn't do yesterday with short classes designed for real life. Anyways, back to the new features found within the OnePlus apps. We're gonna start with the OnePlus Gaming app. The in-game menu got replaced with the one from ColorOS. It's a lot smaller and it comes with some new features and some missing ones. There's no longer a brightness slider, Instagram, Telegram, screen recorder, or rewind recording button. Of course, this could change in the future, but it's missing for now. But you are able to control the touch sensitivity or handedness, and you're able to block the three fingerprint screenshot gesture. You're also able to monitor the FPS, GPU, and CPU power with a floating window and add game filters to remove darkness or have night vision effects. It's almost like I'm cheating. There's also a feature called Voice Modulator, which lets you change your voice during in-game chats to protect your privacy. It honestly sounds like a spectacular feature, but as of now, I couldn't get it to work even within the supported games like PUBG. The clock app is still pretty much the same. It just has some minor visual tweaks, such as the analog clock within the world clock section and the stopwatch. Plus the title is a bit smaller. The OnePlus Files app has been replaced with Oppo's My Files app. It has pretty much the same features as before, but unfortunately, File Dash got removed. And that's just because you can instead use Nearby Share. Plus they included a new Recents tab, which is nice. On top of that, you now get Oppo's Private Safe tool, which lets you hide any personal data behind a fingerprint or passcode. You can isolate any photos, videos, audio, and documents. Keep those sensitive files intact. The Notes app got some major improvements. First off, there's now a to-do list tab to separate your notes from your tasks. I personally love this because the majority of the time that I use the notes app is just to remind myself about something that I need to do for that day. I also really love that I can now categorize my notes within notebooks. I have a notebook for school. It includes all of my school notes, one for random notes and one for my work. Plus you can now create doodles, which is great if you need to draw a graph or table and you can finally format any text such as bolding it, changing the size, highlighting it, etc. 
I'm surprised it took OnePlus this long to include this feature, but better late than never. Finally, just last year, OnePlus created an app called Work-Life Balance, which lets you separate your work-related notifications from all your other notifications. It comes in handy if you don't want to get interrupted by dumb apps while you're working, or want to avoid work while you're not clocked in. Last year, it was only made available to Indian users, but Oxygen OS 12 has brought it to everyone. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work though. Anyways, that's all the major changes found within Oxygen OS 12. I wouldn't recommend installing it just yet though, since I did run into some bugs, such as not being able to download anything from the web. If that doesn't bother you though, and you have an extra OnePlus 9 or 9 Pro lying around, I'll leave a link down below so that you can manually flash it. Either way, here's a list of all the phones that will be getting this update in the future. If you are pumped to get Oxygen OS 12 on your phone, go ahead and drop a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed what you saw, consider subscribing with the notification bell turned on. As I said, quality content like this is a weekly thing on the channel and you're not gonna wanna miss out. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Color OS 12 review. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!